Hi, in this video we're talking about number of real roots. And I'm gonna take just a minute to talk about why do we call it real roots. Remember roots, we call them roots or zeros or x-intercepts, right? But now why do we call it real roots? As you recall, the real numbers are the um, natural numbers plus the whole numbers plus the uh, integers plus the rational numbers plus the irrational numbers, all of them together. Basically all numbers put together. And those are all the numbers that we know. But you're gonna think I'm kidding you, but there's something called imaginary numbers. And imaginary numbers, I know it sounds imaginary, sounds like I'm making this up, are another set of numbers that go on the, kind of like on the y-axis. Now, it's strange that we call them imaginary because number two, or the numbers that we know, we call them as real, are not very real, they're a concept. So if I ask you, show me number two, you may go like this, and I say, no, those are two fingers. If I say two, well, that's that. Well, that's kind of like ink on a board. That's not really number two. Two is a, it's a, it's, it's a concept. And there's another concept of imaginary numbers. So you can have numbers that are purely imaginary, numbers that are purely real, or a number here, which would have like a component, let's say that's, let's say that's six, and that's three. So that's three plus six. I, the I makes it imaginary, that's called a complex number. Good news is you don't have to know any of this. I'm just letting you know why is it that we call it real roots. Because we're still going to be sticking to just the real numbers. But it's kind of strange that we're using that word real. Okay, so let's get back to what we need to know. Real roots are where it cross the x axis. So how many real roots can we have? What are the number of real roots? Well, can we have two zeros? Yes, if it crosses like this, opens up or opens down, and it crosses into two spots. Can we have one zero? Yes, it could just be just touching. The vertex is right on the x-axis. Therefore, it just touches the x-axis and crosses one. This is an interesting case because the zeros and the vertex are at the same point. Open up or open down. And then, can it have no zeros? Well, yes, because the parabolas can be above or below the x-axis and never cross the x-axis. So here's the question. How does quadratic formula, because quadratic formula finds the zeros, correct? So how does it know if it needs to give us two answers, one answer, or no answers? Well, that's the question we can answer right here. How does quadratic formula know? As you remember, it's minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided all by 2a right? Or opposite of b, same thing. Well, that number underneath the square root, that we're going to call the discriminant, and that's what's going to help us figure out how many roots there are, how many real roots. So the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac, and it's going to be pretty logical. And this is the one slide that you really need to understand. If the discriminant ends up being positive, it's going to happen the same way that it's happened so far where you have, let's say it's 20 for example, and I do the square root of 20, well that's 4.47, etc. So I'm gonna have to add 447, and I had to subtract 447 in two different answers. And that's gonna give me the two answers. So when this is positive, I'm gonna have two possible answers, two right answers. I'm gonna have two zeros, two real roots. When the discriminant happens to be zero, in other words, if I'm gonna do the square root of nothing, well the square root of nothing, it's still nothing. Therefore, I'm going to do minus b plus or minus nada, <laughs> plus or minus nothing. So it's minus v divided by 2a. And I only have one possible answer. And that's when we're going to have only one zero or one real root. And lastly, when my discriminant is negative, have you ever tried to do the discriminant, the square root of a negative number? We're going to have an error in your calculator because you cannot get two numbers that multiply by themselves will give you. Uh, a negative number. Now, again, bracket here, imaginary numbers do that, and that's why you always have, if you can't have, you always have two roots. So here's two roots, there's only one root, real root, and one imaginary root. And here you're gonna have no roots and two imaginary roots. But again, just drop the imaginary things, just making things interesting, but I'm not asking you. If it's positive, you're gonna get two answers, two real roots. If it's zero, you're gonna get one answer, one real root. And if it's a negative, then you're just gonna have that you can't do it, so you're gonna have no answers. In summary, on the next slide, 
I promise I won't talk about imaginary numbers anymore. The discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. If that works out to be a positive number, whatever that number is, you will get two answers. Why? Because you're going to be crossing the x-axis twice, either open up or open down. You get two real roots. If that number, the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, gives you zero, then you know that it's just going to be touching only once. So it's going to be one of these cases that it opens up or opens down, and you get uh, one real root. And if the discriminant ends up being a negative number, that will just give you, uh, it tells you that there are no real roots, that the parabola will not cross the x axis, okay? The discriminant just gives you those two answers, either two, one, or zero. It doesn't tell you what the zeros are. In order to find out what the zeros are, you want to do quadratic formula. So let's look at two examples and then we've finished. If I have that y is equal to 2x squared plus 5x minus 6, and I want to find out how many real roots this equation has, then I say a is 2, b is 5, c is minus 6. I plug it in, a minus and a minus gives me a plus, so 5 squared is 25, 4 times 2 times 6 is 48, add them together is 73. 73 is a positive number. Positive number meant, that was on the top, two possible answers because I'm going to add and subtract. And that means I have two real roots. I don't know what the roots are, but I know that there will be two of them. And the other case is when you have something like this. I don't have a y equals, I've got two sides of the equation. x squared plus 3 equals to 2x. Okay, how many an possible answers are there? Okay, I will bring this over to the other side so I know what my a, my b, and my c are. a is 1, b is minus 2, c is 3, and then I plug it into a discriminant. And as you can see here, minus 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 3 gives us 4 minus 12, which is negative 8. Because negative 8 is a negative number, I remember that I'm going to add it to the square root of a negative number, and that means I can't use quadratic formula. So in short, there are no real roots.